You've already heard about 3D printing, making a 3D object by building up material layer by layer. Well, researchers at Penn have discovered a brand new 3D printing method that takes the same idea but scales it way down. So the whole idea kind of came about by chance. We were really looking for uh, how additives and engine oils work, how good a wear performance can you get from these things that we're putting in our engine oils. So the atomic force microscope traditionally is used for imaging things at the small scale. Like a miniature record player that runs over the surface and records the topography and sometimes other properties. But what we realized is that when these molecules or these nanoparticles get trapped and squished, they can do interesting things. Essentially by running this small tip across a surface, we leave behind a trail of reacted molecules that have formed a structure, and that structure we found can be pretty strong. In an atomic force microscope, you have fairly good ability to control the way that stylus moves. And we thought, well, hey, what if we use that to write letters, write different shapes? With a resolution down in the scale of about 100 nanometers, that is 500 times smaller than the width of a human hair. And so we went from the tool generally being used for imaging to a tool now being used to create patterns. So they're basically using a machine built to measure things to create 3D objects. This is completely backwards, and the differences between this and traditional 3D printing don't stop there. Unlike in conventional 3D printing, where you might have a spool of a polymer, the source material is floating around as individual molecules or individual nanoparticles. 3D printing at the nanoscale is really limited in how high a pattern you can get. What our method allows us to do now is additively create things at those small scales, make them thick, make them structurally robust, they have good mechanical properties. We believe that we can use many different types of nanoparticles to form these patterns on surfaces, so it's a more general method than what's available commercially. The way we're doing these patterns is we have one stylus and we're creating a pattern at a time. Our ability to manufacture, let's say at a mass scale, is really limited. This would need to be scaled up, not just having one tip scanning serially over a surface, but maybe having an array of tips scanning in parallel so that we can pattern large areas and do it quickly and repeatably and reliably. 